A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its beauty increases and it never passes into nothingness. A thing of beauty moves away the pall of unhappiness that covers our dark spirit. The beauties of the earth are lovelier than the lovely tales we have heard or read. This is one of the famous line from uh, John Cage, one of the romantic poet. Welcome you all to our English Orchard, A Thing of Beauty by John Cage. As we all know that we are living in a world with great despondence in our life. One of the nature poet who lived in Lenten was born in the year 1795 and died in Rome in 1821 at the age of 25. He was an English romantic poet and one of the main figures of the second generation of romantic poets. And we see that his poetry is characterized by sensual imagery in most of the popular works, which is a series of odes. And today, as we are just moving forward to know about A Thing of Beauty from Nentimion, one of the epic poetry which is considered. And this Entimion is written in the year 1880, considered to be an epic poem. And apart from this, some of his most acclaimed works are Ode to a Nightingale, Sleep and Poetry, and his famous sonnet is On the First, on First Looking into Chapman's Homer. So I told you that a thing of beauty for writing this, the inspiration that he got from Endymion. Endymion is considered to be a poetic romance. And this poem is based on the Greek myth of Endymion, who lives in Mount Litmus, falls in love with the moon goddess Selle. Let's have a look at the background story of Endymion. Endymion was a handsome shepherd boy, the mortal lord of moon goddess Selene or Cynthia. Each night he was kissed to sleep by her. She begged Zeus to grant him eternal life. Zeus compiled putting Endymion into internal sleep and each night Selin visited him on Mount Litmus. The ancient Greek believed that his grave was situated on the mountain. Selin and Endymion were believed to have 50 daughters. Now, coming to A Thing of Beauty by John Cates, we see that this poem says about beautiful things as a source of endless joy. It has eternal beauty which never fades away. A thing, a beautiful thing can always give inspiration and a great solace to any life who is depressed and in the verge of disappointments. We see that a thing of beauty taken from Entimion, which is considered to be an epic. In book 1, a part of that is given for class 12. The poem for class A Thing of Beauty goes like this. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases, it will never pass into nothingness, but will keep a ball coiled for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and coiled breathing. Therefore, on every morrow, are we wreathing a flowery band to bind us to the earth, in spite of the despondence of the inhuman dearth of noble natures, of the gloomy days, of all unhealthy and overdarkened ways, made for our searching, yes, in spite of all, some shape of beauty moves away the pall from our dark spirit. Such as the sun, the moon, trees old and young, sprouting a shady boon, for simple shape, and such are daffodils with the green world they live in, and the clear rails that for themselves a cooling cord make against the hot season, the midst forest break, rich with sprinkling of fair mustrous blooms. And such too is the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead, all lovely tales that we have heard or read, an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring into us from the heavens bring. This is the part from book 1 given to class 12. And as we go deeper into the 
form a thing of beauty we say that the poet just talks about six important matters number 1 a thing of beauty is a joy forever number 2 the things that cause sufferings and pains number 3 beauty moves away the pall of sadness number 4 things that are sources of happiness number 5 how is going to be a blessing for our life and number 6 nature is an endless fountain of joy so just coming closer to the first part of thing of beauty the first five lines here we see that a thing of beauty is a joy forever its loveliness increases it will never pass into nothingness but will keep a bar coy for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and coy breathing but we see in this line here we see that the poet was just talking about the importance of beauty in one's life because you know that we all are human mortals we have problems and we have great disappointments in life but considering beauty it gives a great joy in our life forever you know that we all are aspiring great beautiful things in our life we used to appreciate beauty and no one can close her or his eyes before a beautiful scenery that may be one of the reason why why our john keats just talks about a thing of beauty is a joy for ever irrespective of age irrespective of gender everyone loves beautiful things so here it says that a beauty is a constant thing and it can pro- provide everlasting source of joy and pleasure that's why it says that a thing of beauty is a joy forever its loveliness increases it will never pass into nothingness it says that time can't fade its beauty as its loveliness increases with the passage of time and also we see that the poet was just talking about the value of beauty the value of beauty never comes into a decrease form it only increases from day after day and with the passage of time it will never come into nothingness that's what he says it will never pass into nothingness with the passage of time and here it says that this beauty will goes on increasing and it will be never de- reduced into nothingness it will provide a pleasant shelter a place just like a bower what is a bower bower means a grove grove means group of trees so you know that under the trees definitely will get shade in the whole season and the cooling of ourselves we can just rest under a tree just likewise as you just get a shade in your life from the extreme hot sun just likewise beauty can give you a source of solace in your life and says that this is like a shade under a tree for us beauty can be considered like a bow coil for us and it also provides what it also provides a sleep full of sweet dreams and coil and says that it gives us effortless breathing also that's what the poet says here it says that what beauty can give us it can give a pleasure for a lifetime that's what it says that a beauty is a joy forever and the loveliness increases that's why it's a pleasure for a lifetime and it's also said that it will not get diminished with the passage of time also we have seen that beauty can create great joy in the soul forever and will diminish us what negativity in life negativity means or sorrows disappointments in our life and also beauty have got power to heal and to give increasing happiness with comfortable life that's why it says that you will get a sleep full of sweet dreams and also the last line what full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing that means just like it has got the power to increase happiness 
with comfortable life and also beauty provides peace and happiness without any physical or mental stress and beauty seems to be like a quiet place under the shady trees okay so this is what the poet was trying to say about what beauty can give us it can give a pleasure for a lifetime and you will get rid of from all the negative aspects in your life and you will experience a positive vibe in your life and it can also provide what good health because you are not tensed and can provide physical and mental happiness peace and happiness in your life because you are not thinking about anything ill or sick of others when you are enjoying beauty these are some of the qualities that the poet was just talking about what beauty can do for us or how a thing of beauty can increase its loveliness coming to the next lines we see that therefore on every morrow are we rethink a flowery band to bind us to earth in spite of the dissonance of the inhuman dearth of noble natures of gloomy days of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pall from our dark spirit i told you that the second part of the second point of this poem is things that cause us suffering and pain you know that we suffer from malice disappointments we lack good human qualities and noble natures isn't it and these things makes our life what gloomy and we also develop because of all these reasons we also develop unhealthy and evil ways we need to think about in such like ways but here it says that these thoughts and these deeds from inhuman people can cause us nothing but suffering and pain so here it says apart from all these things what we have to do we have here it says that therefore on every morrow are we wreathing a flowery band to bind us to earth so the poet says that it's very essential as we are living in a world which gives no values to human life which doesn't found any sort of happiness in others life what we have to do in order to get rid of this evil thinking or evil thoughts of people we have to create a bond with nature our attachment to the earthly things should be like a flowery wreath you know what is wreath wreath is a bouquet with full of flowers which only gives what happiness in our life so it is says that therefore on every morrow morrow means what morning on every morning we should make a wreath that means we need to have a closer bond with nature to enjoy the serenity of nature to enjoy the scenic beauty of nature once you devote yourself to enjoy the bliss of nature definitely you are attaching yourself towards the earth because we are a part of earth said it so and that may be the reason why it says that we need to have a good attachment towards the earth then only we can just get it off from all the disappointments of life that we are receiving from other human beings who lacks values in life and also here we say that dejection is all around people have some sort of mental physical stress in their life isn't it so you know that um uh, depression unhealthy attitude and also talking ill about others playing sick games with others isn't it this all these things create a sort of unhealthy and darkened days in our life and it's very hard to find what noble natures or noble creatures isn't it and if you are just putting ourselves as uh, a recipient of all this inhuman dirt definitely our life will be just like surrounded by evil creatures and unhealthy things dominate our life so in order to overcome all these situations in life what we have to do we need to create a strong bond with nature as nature has the power to fascinate man and also we said that 
we all suffering from all these unhealthy evil ways only what can remove only the beauty of nature can remove the covering of gloomy days from our life that's why it says that of all unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pall what is pall pall means covering covering of what covering of the gloomy days covering of the disappointments or the uh, attitude of inhuman people who does something evil to us and if we are just a victim of all this inhuman dirt definitely we are putting our spirit in dark and ways in order to overcome from the dark spirit what we have to do we need to admire nature that fascinates man and also here we see that in order to overcome this negative elements that affects our life beauty is a great source and it can heal the sadness from our life too so that's why the poet says that even if our life causes a lot of problems in our life beauty is one of the source to remove the curtain of what curtain of sadness isn't it and whatever may happen in our life we need not bother about that since we just put ourselves to enjoy the fascinating nature isn't it there is nothing in this nature that can cure human mind the only thing is that we need to put ourselves or we need to give a space to enjoy nature we need to go closer towards nature that's why the poet says that every morning we need to attach ourselves with the earthly things by creating a wreath from nature from the beautiful flowers okay so the next lines goes like this what are the things of beauty that god created man to overcome all disappointments in life what are the things that you can aspire about to see life in its fullness by enjoying the beauties that god created what what are the beautiful things such the sun the moon trees old and young sprouting a shady bone from simple shape and such as daffodils with the green world they live in and the clear rills that for themselves are cool and covered make against the whole whole season the mid forest break with a rich rich with the sprinkling of fair musk rose blossom and such too is the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead all lovely tales that we have heard or read so in this lines the poet was just talking about the beautiful things god created what are the things that you can just look forward to see happiness in your life how can you just wipe out the disappointments from your life how can you create a positive vibe in your life from nature see what are the beautiful things isn't it there is not a single person who can't just take away the eyes from this beautiful things of nature isn't it this poet is just giving out a way to put ourselves overcome the gloomy days look at the sun look at the moon isn't it that itself shows the greatest creation of god that it provides light that it provides a sort of soothing a uh, calmness to mind sun is always a promising for human nation or human beings because each day when the sun comes it's a great promise for us that a day is before us a day is here we are alive isn't it and this sun is providing light for all the things in this earth not only for man only not only for nature not only for trees not only for animals but here we see that the sun is a boon for humanity how because it just provide light it provides heat and it's a great source of energy and it is just telling us yes we are alive so in it the next day we are alive and just such like here it says that the moon 
the moon at night when you look at the sky it just wipes away all your sorrows that you have experienced during the daytime and there also there is a path just says about the glory of god said it and here the again the poet says that the trees old and young sprouting a shady boon for the simple sheep so it says that and not only the celestial bodies just like the sun or the moon but the things that you see on the earth also what are they it says the trees already we have seen in the first part of the poem that it seems to be like a shade beauty is just like a shade given by a tree so here it says that how can this creation be a thing of beauty how when something keeps a great or something can provide a great help for another then the real meaning of beauty is there as long as the sun can provide light it's a thing of beauty as long as the sun can provide heat it's a thing of beauty as long as sun is a source of energy it's a thing of beauty definitely likewise what trees can do trees whether it is old or young what is that says that if it can be a blessing boon means what boon means a blessing a wish isn't it if it can give a blessing it can be a blessing for the simple sheep those who wander in the field or in the desert for grazing you know that after some times if they wanted to take rest definitely if the trees whether it is young or old if it can provide a shady boon for the simple sheep then definitely trees are a thing of beauty because it's doing a great favor for whom favor for the simple sheep who wanders in the lonely way the pastures isn't it in the pastures as they roam around they want to get rest so they comes under the trees and now here it says it's such like the daffodils you know that with the green world they live in you know the daffodils are beautiful flowers with different colors you know that in a world of green this yellow color or orange color whatever be it is a great attraction and this yellow color is just a contrast to the green world looking or watching only one color and a whole space will not give us beauty but just a yellow color and a low color emits green color which gives the beauty for the forest or the green world then this daffodils also becomes a thing of beauty then here so talks about what then talks about the clear rails that themselves for a cool and cover it makes against the hot season you know that hot season summer season during summer season it's very hard for even human beings to survive without water isn't it so this rails rails means what streams small streams that passes through the forest it gives comfort a cooling atmosphere to the nearby places and it gives life also you might have love, heard about the poem brook in that brook the poet was just talking about from where it starts from where to where it ends in between in which all parts it just moves in different areas isn't it different different ways and this rivers is a source of life too isn't it water is a source of life it's impossible for us to lead a life without a drop of water so anyhow this streams will become a thing of beauty if it can provide water during which season during the hot season otherwise the streams cannot be a thing of beauty isn't it if it can if it can't provide a cooling ambience if it can't provide life to the nearby things around then it cannot be a thing of beauty as long as 
this water can provide a cooling ambience in the hot season to the nearby plants definitely that is a thing of beauty and again the poet says and what about the musk rose you know that the fragrance given by the musk rose it's amazing isn't it so it says that definitely in the mid forest break rich with the sprinkling of fair musk rose it is just wiping away or driving away what the smell the foul smell that comes from the forest and it's going to be a great attraction a beautiful sight for the people or for the nature isn't it can you imagine a world with a lot of flowers with beautiful fragrance isn't it attractive fragrance definitely that forest will be enriched by the presence of this musk rose and then here we see that what the poet talks about the blessings of nature as trees becomes a shelter for simple sheep then it's a great solace for the sheep then this daffodils brightens the green world in which they live and if the streams if it can provide a cooling shelter for the whole season then that is also a blessing of nature then talking about the musk roses that makes the forest rich with its fragrance and then what the poet says about here is and says that and such too is the grandeur of the dooms what is that such too is the grandeur of the dooms that means you know that there are so many heroes or the mighty people who just did adventurous deed for the human beings especially talking about the soldiers what about the life of the soldiers what are they doing they are just saving our lives from the hands of the enemies they are devoting their life in order to secure their nation are they not a mighty dead or are they not considered to be mighty people what about the stories about the soldiers can they call as the heroic tales that inspires our their life in our lives too send it the stories of these people and about the forefathers send it and all these things actually here it says that even after the death death of these people here it says that this magnificence of beauty surpasses the grandeur of the dooms that we have imagined for the mighty dead because these people has given their life or sacrificed their life for the sake of others so definitely such people will be rewarded on the doomsday or this doomsday the day of judgment that is a day that we all believe that god is going to give us at the end of our lives so it on the day of judgment definitely those mighty people who have did who have done adventurous deeds in our life just by giving their own life for the sake of the rest of the people who sacrifice their life definitely they'll get a reward from god and definitely the splendor of the heroic tales inspires us we know the stories of the people who fought for our country we know the stories of the people who just made us free birds or made us free people to live and think in the way that we like so there there are many sacrifices and devoted lives before us so such people can be called as what such people can be called as dead mighty dead and their stories are definitely great inspiration for our life too so what the poet he says is that definitely the stories definitely more appealing than all the things that we have heard or read the beauty of the nature is more appealing than the stories we have heard or read and also we can see that this joy fulfills only at the last two lines what the poet says that an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring into us from the 
heaven spring it says that all these beautiful things all the beautiful uh, things that we have seen just like the musk flowers just like the stories of the mighty dead all the lovely tales the beautiful stories that you have heard or that you have read about other people about the beautiful land definitely these beautiful things can be compared or they are like a fountain which is flowing from where flowing from heaven's brink brink means the edge the verge of heaven okay so these beautiful things are like a fountain of immortality what is immortal drink immortal drink when you have this immortal drink you will never face death in your life that is the immortal spirit of happiness that you will receive after you enjoy the bliss of nature and it will be like a drink that you are just accepting from heaven just like this is the greatest blessing that god can give to human being the only thing is that we need to have the presence of mind to enjoy these beauties of nature and only it can give a solace to our soul the bounties of the earth really rejuvenates or refreshes from the drooping spirit of man sometimes we face ourselves in great tribulations of life and we find it very hard to overcome these situations in life but the poet says that there is something that cure you from the drooping spirit of man which can rejuvenate your life which can refresh your mentality which can put you into eternal bliss or is that all the beautiful things just look around the nature just have a closer look to your nature let's let just have a closer bond with nature attach yourself with nature spend some time and enjoy the bliss of nature it can heal you it can protect you it can give you good health it can give you good sleep even it's like the nature is like an immortal drink or fountain that you receive from where from heaven and god himself he is giving you this immortal drink you have to accept it and take it in your heart as you receive it from heaven okay these are the things the poet just talks about then you definitely enjoy immense joy in your life thereby you will be blessed by the creation of god actually we also need to surrender ourselves to this blissful ambience that was freely given to us the beautiful bounty of the earth just accept that one and make yourself a worthy person to be called okay that is what the poet john keats just talks about a thing of beauty in this poem and already we have said that this is a part of intimion a poem which is epic poem which is considered to be just talking about the importance of beauty in life and we all can just appreciate give space to appreciate beauty in your life okay just for good health just for sweet dreams and for great real relaxation in life just spare some time to have the vibes of beautiful things around you that is from nature okay so let's see the poetic devices said here first one is alliteration as we already said alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds that is here the sound s is uh, repeated in sprouting shade sh sure. then cooling cover then the poet is giving the imagery of what with the uh, sense of ice we can just glimpse the trees giving shade the daffodils the clean river streams the fountain from heaven etc okay you can just visualize all these things as you just go through the poem then antithesis what is antithesis here we see that the poet has 
made two opposite weights placed together that is old and young in order to signify what the trees whether they are old or young they can do a great purpose what is the purpose purpose of giving shade to the simple sheep who wandered around in the pasture land okay so this is what you see in a thing of beauty okay remember to enjoy each moment of life by making it worthy enough okay so remember that beautiful things are like a fountain of immortality bestowed upon us by god and they can only inspire us to live on and maintain our faith in goodness okay thank you all have a great day